this all recorded. Everybody got a, a handout, a little bag with cards in it, and then one of these out in the lobby. Elwood, I'm gonna go ahead and go. If something's not right, holler. All right, well, welcome back everybody to week three of Understanding the Way You Are Wired. I really appreciate you coming out on this mildly cold Wednesday night. Um, so last week, for those of you who were here, we went over our strengths and weaknesses of each temperament. And that was a lot of information to take in, trying to hear all those strengths and then also to hear all those weaknesses. And I don't know about you, but it's never fun to have to look at yourself and think, oh, people see that as a weakness in me and to deal with that. And it's really hard. Um, but I'm hoping that when we look at our weaknesses, we are able to allow Jesus to step in and help us in those weaknesses so we can operate in our strengths. Um, and before we do that, I, did, I forgot one thing I need to do. I wanted to let you know, next week is our last class for this one. And then Pastor Brandon asked me to remind everybody that the next Wednesday night, we're gonna be starting a six week series on the life of David. And I love David and David has a lot of of parallels to Jesus. He does a lot of the things in his life are precursors and show us who Jesus is gonna be. So I really encourage you, come back and get to know David a little bit better. And so that'll start not next week, but the week after that, okay? I don't wanna to forget to do that for Pastor Brandon. So as I said, it is challenging to see our weaknesses, but in our weaknesses, what's great is that we have a God who loves us and a God who made us. And so he comes with us in our weaknesses and gives us his power. And um, one of the questions that I got that I thought I'd start the class with um, is what color do you think Jesus was? <laughs> okay, yeah, they put it up here, it says all of them. <laughs> Jesus was every one of those colors. You can't pinpoint and say, oh, well, he was a green because he was calm and peaceful and loving, but he was also a leader and he was uh, orderly in direction and he um, was definitely a leader. Jesus is every color rolled into one. And then from him, we reflect his image and we see it in the different parts. But Jesus is every color. And I love that because then he is there with every one of you. So he understands your temperament because he lived in this body and he knows what it was like. So let's ask him to join us tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that um, you are everything that we need and that Lord, we reflect you. And so I pray Lord Jesus that every person tonight would just connect a little bit more with you and understand how they show your image and that you are with them. Lord, thank you that you know us. You're not up in heaven going, oh, I didn't realize they were gonna do it that way. You know exactly how we are. And Lord, you designed us for a purpose. And I pray that tonight would help us uh, gain some more wisdom and understanding so we can live in the purpose that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so for those of you who haven't been here or just to make sure we're kind of all on the same page, let's take just a second and kind of go through each of the temperaments, make sure we're understanding where each of them are from. Now, as I say them, I'd love to once again see if you know what you are, because that really does help me look at where we are. And one of the things that, one of the questions on one of the videos was, what is the breakdown of temperaments as you look at people? And what's really interesting is they're pretty much even. There's no men or women, there's more yellows and girls and more reds and blue and boys or anything like that. It breaks down pretty much evenly in people in the sexes too. And it's just kind of neat because God didn't say, oh, one of these is more important than this one. And I would never want anyone to think from me talking or what's in these papers that one of these is more important. Every single one of these is important and unique and we need to appreciate each one. So let's start tonight with our greens. And our greens speak the language of calm and harmony. 
They are introverts, which means it takes them time to think through things before they talk. They want time to think about it. I've learned about introverts, there is so much that they process that it does take them time before they'll speak. They are people oriented. If you're a green, you have people, you think about people, but you don't think about hundreds of people, you think about your people and you like those tight, close friendships. Greens are described as peaceful, steady, calm, patient, and kind. That would be some of their strengths. When they're operating the strengths that God gave them, they are kind and peaceful. But when they're operating in their weaknesses, they can tend to be stubborn, they can resent being pushed, and they'll have no sense of urgency but they are great mediators and loyal friends. Now, if you think you're a green, raise your hand. All right, so we got some greens there, I love it. All right, our next are our blues. And our blues, oh, one thing about the greens, I'm sorry. Greens we would describe as having peaceful strengths and weaknesses. And so their strengths are very peaceful. Their weaknesses are very peaceful. They're not up in your face, but they're very peaceful. Our blues, they live the the language of order and perfection. Our blues are also introverts. So they take time to think through things before they talk about it. They're analytical and methodical. So it takes them time to think through it. They are task oriented. So they're not necessarily thinking about people. They're thinking about things that need to be done instead of directing all their thoughts towards people. They have very deep strengths and weaknesses. And so a blue who's operating in their weakness, they might be negative. They're gonna fear failure. They might be judgmental and critical. But when a blue is operating in their strengths, they're amazing problem solvers. They're analytical, creative, detailed. They're very compassionate and great problem solvers. And a lot of times blues are very artistic in many different ways. A lot of the people I know who are very creative are blues. So how many of us think you're blue? Oh, we got a lot of blues in here. Wow. Okay. So we got lots of blues. All right. And there are deep strengths and weaknesses. Next, we have our reds. Our reds speak the language of power and control. They are extroverts, lots of talking, and then they are task oriented. So they're not necessarily thinking, how do I connect with people? They're thinking, what do I need to get done? They have very powerful strengths and weaknesses. So it's very obvious when a red is operating in their weakness because they will argue, they will dominate, they can be very harsh, bossy, impatient, and intolerant but a red operating in their strength is a great leader. They're very responsible, decisive, good at decision-making, and can be very dynamic leading a group of people. And then last, but certainly not least, we have our yellows. And our yellows speak the language of people and fun. They are extroverts, so they are going to be talking because that's how they think. Yellows are people people. And the more people, the better for them. They wanna be around a lot of people. Um, Yellows have very loud strengths and weaknesses. Now a yellow operating in their weakness, they may elaborate, they may um, exaggerate, they may speak very loudly, they may interrupt others and not pay attention to details. But a yellow operating in the strengths that God gave them, they are amazing storytellers, They bring joy and sparkle to the people that they're around. They always see the best in people. They're easy to forgive and they're incredibly optimistic. And so our yellows have very loud strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so how many, I forgot, how many reds do we have? Okay, not quite as many. And how many yellows do we have? All right, there's my yellows, I love it. 
All right, so tonight, I really love this talk, and I feel like when I was learning this and we were in small group, this is kind of really where the light went off for me, like, oh, this is practical, and this makes sense, and this helps me kind of interact with people. So we're going to talk about innate needs tonight. What are the needs that God wired into each of our hearts, into each of our minds, based on our temperaments? And it really does help you understand why you do some of the things that you do and why other people do the things that they do. And so hopefully you're gonna be able to understand the needs that the people around you, the people you have relationships with have. So I thought, how do I explain this? And thought I would start with a personal story. I did ask my husband if I was allowed to share this story and you are more than welcome to ask him his version of it from a blue perspective instead of a red perspective. It involves the dishwasher. (laughs) Okay, do any of you have any idea what this might be about? Shout it out if you think you might know what this might be about, go ahead. It involves loading the dishwasher. Exactly. Now, when I load the dishwasher, you get it in there. It really doesn't matter how you get it in there because you've got other stuff to get to. So I'm cooking, I'm whatever. You rinse it, boom, stick it in. Rinse and stick it in, boom, stick it in. No big deal. It's a dishwasher. Its job is to wash dishes. Doesn't matter how I put them in there, it's gonna wash the dishes. So I do that. As we got married, I realized my husband would come behind me and blues, what would he do? (laughs) Rearrange it so it was right. And I realized that most of their glass is blue. And I would look and I'd be like, oh dear God, why are you doing that? It's a dishwasher. Not a big deal. You know, you get used to it. And then it was, do you realize When you put two spoons together with food in the middle, they're not going to get washed. It doesn't matter. They'll eventually get there. And if you pull it out and there's food on it, you just rinse it off and put it in the thing. And so this would happen. And he would say something like, and not in a bad way, just like, why are you doing that? Didn't you realize there was other spoons? base there instead of jamming that in the one place for the silver where there's 15 you could have been in the other side where there was two and I love how my blues are like "Uh uh-huh yep and so finally after learning the temperaments a little bit I said to him one day why does it matter tell me why this matters to you not a why does it matter I don't think I did did I honey I hope I asked in a nice calm way not in my loud red self why does this matter And he gave me a great explanation and I understood it a whole lot better. He said, well, if you put a glass on this side and then you put the other glass on this side, you balance it out and it's gonna roll. If it's balanced on this side and balanced on this side, it'll roll and it'll last longer. If you put the forks in this way and you make sure they're separated, the water comes up, all the food goes down the drain. You don't have to run the dishwasher again. And then we live on a well and he's like, and if you wash all the food off, then we don't have to worry about the well and the well will last longer. The dishwasher will do what it's supposed to do. It'll last longer. That'll save us money. We'll have more money in the bank. So we have to have an emergency. We'll be okay. Boom. And how many of you blues are like, amen, that sounds perfect. But now I understood it. The basis of (laughs) the challenge flag. Would you like to ch- would you like to explain it differently? No, that was great, honey. <laughs> the basis of why it mattered to him was safety. In the long run, by doing this the right way, you saved money, it took care of us, and it was a better use of our money and our resources. And I went, "Oh, I get it." because we're gonna talk tonight, one of Blue's needs is safety. So now I try, 
I promise I try to put the dishes in better. I try to rinse them off better. And I've even said, how would you do this? Because I cannot think how that would work. When I look at that, he sees if you go this and this and this and this, that is not how my brain works because I'm red. It's called get it done, get it in there and move on. But I've learned that is a need that he has so I can adjust why it's happening and not get mad about it. Because when I heard, why are you doing it like that? What I heard was, you're not doing it right, you're incompetent, fix it. Which isn't what he said at all. But my brain heard it differently. Now I understand when he'll make a comment that involves safety. It isn't because he doesn't trust me. It isn't because I'm incompetent. It's because he is motivated by safety. And so something as simple as that can make a huge difference in relationships. And since a lot of you laughed, how many of you have had a conversation or an exchange with someone in your life like that? Raise your hand. (laughs) Well, then God had you here for exactly the right reason. And so even just learning the phrase, why does it matter? or what are you thinking can change a conflict or a instance you're having because you're coming at it differently with a different need in the situation. All right, so thank you, honey, for letting me tell that story. So in the context of relationships, something small can become very big and it can matter. So to get us kind of thinking about the needs of the different temperaments, if you could go ahead and get out your four colors, I'm gonna read a statement to you and I want you to think which temperament needs this. Now, I'd love you to hold it up high so we could see it. For all of my green friends that I know this is gonna be a little bit quick on making a decision, you can hold it right here so nobody sees. And I'm really just trying to, and when I say stuff like that, I'm not trying to like poke fun at different temperaments. I'm trying to help you see that when we address people with different temperaments, we can adjust the way we do it and honor them. My yellows, if you wanna wave it and jump up and down and whoosh, whoosh, go right ahead. I would love it. Get some of that energy out. Blues, I'm gonna try to give you a little extra second, a couple, 10 seconds to process and think. All right, so let's look at our first one. Which temperament from what we've talked about do you think would want to hear, would need to hear, I want you to be there and be part of the dinner? All right, now this is, this is kind of a tough one to start out with because it does, everybody does wanna be included, but that really is probably geared to yellows because they want to be with other people. They wanna be included. Now, not that any of the other temperaments don't wanna be included, but yellows, it's a big deal to them. All right, the next one. Would you like some quiet time in your room to have some time to think? All right, so we're a little bit, little bit not sure on that one. That actually is probably geared more towards our blues because we're gonna learn blues need time away. They need some space and silence. Now, not that greens don't too, but that's a big deal to blues. All right, how about this one? Let's make sure we have the absence of conflict and combative words. All right, there you go. Those are our greens. Those are our greens. They don't want fighting. They don't want stress. They want us to find ways to get along. How many greens just look forward to Thanksgiving dinner with all those different people? (laughs) You can imagine now if you have someone who's green in your life and you're going to dinner, they're the ones who say, we're not talking politics or religion, please. Whereas some of the rest of you are like, let's bring it on and let's go. 
All right, so our next one, come, it's always better when you're here. All right, so this is a little bit, This it's more of a yellow statement. A lot of you thought it was red because I was going in order. I tricked you up on that one. That was kind of yellow. All they, yellows always, how many of you are yellows want to hear, include me, I want to be there, help me go there. How many of you that really resonates with yellows? All right. Now, how many reds, because we saw some reds. How many reds are like, if they said something like this to you, would you come and lead the team? What do you think about that one? What color do you think would be, would you come and lead the team? I know you can handle it. All right, so that's a red. It's not that any temperament doesn't want to be included. Every one of us want to be included, want to be loved, want to be respected. We all want that. Sometimes it's just in a little different way. How about this one? I made sure the restaurant will be quiet and is in a good neighborhood. There you go. Why do you, why do some of you pick the blues? Safe. Okay, you're gonna learn friends who are blues, they're gonna tell you they're blue by the word safe. I had a conversation with a mom who was looking at a venue for where her daughter's wedding were gonna be. In that five minute conversation, I heard the word safe four times. And I just was listening and going, I knew you were blue, but yes, you are. And that's not a bad thing. All right, how about this one? Wow, you put so much time and effort into this and it worked great. All right, that's generally a red statement. We're gonna learn one of a red's needs is appreciation and credit for their work. And so they're going to, not that other temperaments don't, but for reds, they wanna know that what they did worked well and it was, you appreciated it. Okay, how about this one? You always read people so well, I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so we, we got the people things. Probably it's more of a green because reading people and really knowing them is more green than yellow. Yellow has a thousand best friends. Greens know everything about their five friends. And that's where the difference comes in. All right, so we're going to look at the innate needs. And I wanna read you this quote from Kathleen. She says, they are called innate needs because they are an inborn part of the way we are designed to work. They act as the fuel that powers us to be our best, most authentic selves. When your innate needs tank is filled, you have what you need to operate in your strength. When it's not, watch out. You're likely to act in your weakness. And I love that quote because it gives us a great picture of thinking about innate needs. If you think about innate needs, it's thinking about a gas tank of a car. If you fill up a car with gas, what happens? <laughs> Optimally, what should happen once the car is filled with gas? She runs. You can get in it, you can drive it, you can do whatever in a car, what's supposed to be done in a car. What happens when a car is running out of gas? And it's, have, have anybody ever been in a car that ran out of gas? It sputters, it's just, and that's what is the same for innate needs. When your needs are filled, you are running on all cylinders. When your needs are not filled, you're sputtering. And so inside your packet from um, the Kind Words Are Cool website, I took the gauging innate needs. And this kind of goes through the different colors, what they need, and then you can kind of gauge, oh, where am I on that? Where are your kids on that? Where are my parents or my siblings? And we'll go through what that exactly means, but this is a great sheet to sometimes pull out and go, hmm, where am I right now? And maybe it might explain if you're seeing yourself operating in weaknesses. 
But being a children's director, I didn't just feel like gas tanks were, they weren't fun. I thought of balloons. And if you look at these great little balloon things that Miss Daphne made for me, these balloons are what? With air. They're filled with air. They look fun, they're pretty. How about these guys? If I had put 10 of these like that, would that have been looked fun? Not at all. This is easier for me to remember when it comes to needs. But both gas tanks and balloons need to be refilled. If I do this, sorry, I probably shouldn't do this. And I hold it, it's gonna be filled, but it's eventually gonna lose air. If I want this to operate at full strength, what do I have to do? I gotta fill it back up again. That's how you have to think about innate needs. They are never like once filled and done. It's your whole life. It's your kid's whole life. It's your boss's whole life. They have to be filled. And so it's like a gas tank. And so it wouldn't matter. So I wanna read this one quote by Kathleen and then we're gonna talk about them. Our innate needs are never fully and finally satisfied. We need a steady stream of words that fills our needs our entire life. Now, I would like to say when we reach heaven, needs are fully met, fully perfect, which makes me think, oh, heaven's even better than I thought about it. It's, you're gonna be fully met forever in heaven. But here on earth, you're gonna need gas, and then there's gonna be other times when you have a lot and then you're gonna need more. And so we're gonna talk about that tonight. What are the things that you need? And once again, this is not like a science of it's just these four things. Some of you have two temperaments, so you might go between a few of them. Um, so let's look, go, jump right in and look at them. So we're gonna start with our yellows. So these are the four innate needs that a yellow temperament needs. They need attention approval, acceptance, and affection. So what does that mean? Attention, they need to be, they feel liked for who they are. So when you're around a yellow, you have to look at them and let them know you accept them for who they are. And so if they're being a little crazy or a little loud, do you think saying to them, shh, be quiet, does that fill that needs tank up? Not at all. It goes at, it, that actually, it's almost like taking this balloon and putting a pin to it. And that's a good way to sometimes think of your words. Your words can literally, and all that goes out the door. So they need approval. They wanna be included and invited. And so they want to be part of things. Um, I have a friend who's yellow and I forgot to tell them, we had talked um, on the weekend about a thing that we were doing and I forgot to follow up with them. And we were doing something as a group and I just completely forgot, probably because I had too much on my plate and forgot to tell them when and what we were doing. Somebody else posted a picture of all of us together. My yellow friend saw that. What do you think happened? They were crushed and they got angry. They got loud and were not happy. And I knew right away, I'm like, of all people to have forgotten. Now, as a red, one of our weaknesses is when we make a mistake, we don't like that. And I'm like, well, it was her fault. We talked about it once and she should have remembered. And if she had really wanted to go, she should have asked about it and caught myself slipping into my redness and went, wait a minute, stop. Doesn't matter. She's feeling left out. And so I had to, I am so sorry. I would have wanted you there, you would have made it funner. I sent her yellow roses, but I learned right in that instance, it was so important to a yellow to feel included. 
And so maybe some of you have kids who are yellows or maybe you have a yellow f- sibling and they're always like, but they didn't want me or they forgot me. Or if they're the kid who, gets un- who doesn't get invited to the party, the world's crushed. And so it does really matter to yellows. They need acceptance. They need your full attention and eye contact. Um, I have another yellow friend who comes to see me sometimes. And when she walks into my office, I'm usually doing something. And in my mind, I am finishing that up so then I can pay attention to her. But my yellow friend walks in and all she sees is this. You think that fills her up? So she came to see me during the class. My head's going, my yellow friend's coming. She walked in, got up, walked around my desk, gave her a big hug. How are you? It's good to see you. Let me finish this one thing and I'll be able to give you my full attention. She said, she goes, oh my goodness, that felt so good. And I went back, did my thing, and she went and talked to a couple other people and came back. Guess what? We were both good. Because I'm starting to learn when my yellow friends or when my yellow boss, I don't have a yellow boss, when I use friends, I'll use friends, or a couple people in my family, I have a couple yellows in my family, and they walk into the room, I am stopping, I am turning my attention to them, I am giving them eye contact and making sure they know I am here, I see you, you're here. Because what's going to happen when they don't get it? We have several yellow children here at church. And you can tell, I can tell in the middle of my lesson who what yellows have not had attention because they're the ones who are jumping on the couch, underneath the table, saying silly questions. And there's a few of them that I've learned as soon as they walk in the room, stop, go over, talk to them spend a little bit of time with them. And what's amazing is some of the issues we were having, we're not having anymore because their tank got filled when they walked in the room and now they're operating in their strengths. Not, oh, there's nobody's listening to me. I need somebody to pay attention to me. And I know that sounds kind of like, well, that's not biblical, but this is the way God wired them. It's not that they're like, me, 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 me. They just wanna know that someone knows they're there. So let's, um, we're gonna look at uh, loyalty, which is our reds. I'm sorry, we're gonna move on to our reds. Reds are different. They don't need the same thing that a yellow needs. What does a red need? A red needs loyalty. They need a sense of control. They need appreciation and they need credit for work. So loyalty means that they're prioritized that you have their back. So if you say you're gonna do something for a red, you need to do it because they will see that as, oh, I had a friend a long time ago, I had invited them over after church, years ago, not even this church. And um, I spent a ton of time on decorating the table and having the food ready and they're not showing up. They're not showing up. And where are you? I'm doing a cookie exchange. I'll be there. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And I was like, I felt like betrayed. But that loyalty, meaning that they are, they have your back and they're gonna be there when they say they're gonna be there, that really matters to a red. A sense of control. They need to be able to come up with a plan and then everyone pulls their weight. So if a red gives you a job, they want you to do it and they need you to do it. And then afterwards they're like, I, I'm, this is out of my control and I can't fix. And, and that's why a lot of reds will sometimes get angry and louder because I need this to work the way it should work. They need appreciation. They need to be valued for their strengths and they need credit for work that the efforts they give to tasks are noticed and appreciated. I had someone once tell me years and years ago, you're the hardest worker I know. That ranks up like 
Every once in a while when I'm like, I still remember that comment. It mattered to me that someone knew I was a hard worker. And so if you're a red, you probably need people to say to you, thank you for what you do. My husband, after I'll spend the day cleaning the house, thank you, Jenny, for cleaning the house. It smells great. You did a wonderful job. He doesn't just comment on my dishwasher ability. He's learned credit for work is great. <laughs> and he hates that I'm talking about him, but that's okay. All right, blues. So blues, you need a little bit different than what yellows and reds need. Blues, you need safety, sensitivity, support, and space and silence. So safety, being able to trust their surroundings and their relationships. So not only does it need to be a safe place, you need to be a safe person. And so for like, an, for example, for a blue, if they trust you with something and then you go blabbing it to 8,000 other people, are you a safe person? Nope. They will know who's safe and who's not. Sensitivity. They need to be understood and have their feelings considered. They need support. They need you to notice when they need help. They're probably not always gonna ask for it, so they want you to jump in and support them in what they're doing. And they need space and silence. So they need time to decompress, process, and think uninterrupted by noise and people. And so this is why maybe you don't, if you were blue, you never understood, I just need, to, I just need some quiet time. And you need to leave. Imagine what that looks like at Thanksgiving dinner. For the red who's like, this is all perfect and this is all the way it's supposed to be. I just need some time by myself. You can see where relationships jump in. I have a niece, Jackie, and she okayed that I said this. She is a high, high blue and she will get overwhelmed. And so now it's, they'll look at her and they're like, do you need some Jackie time? Yes. They know she then goes into her room. She has a quiet nook in her own room and she reads. And so she has Jackie time. And so they've learned when she's getting overwhelmed, give her a place to go relax. For moms, dads who have blue children, coming home from school, guess what they're probably gonna wanna do? Go to their room and just decompress. You're a red parent. All right, let's get out. Let's unpack your backpack. Let's get your homework done. Let's, you know, make a lunch for tomorrow. Give them some space. Give them some time. And just because you want it to be in order, they, they'll do it. But they might need a little bit of time to decompress first. My same niece, Jackie, in terms of safety... They, were, they live in Florida and they were flying up here to visit us. And she was very nervous about flying up here. Normally, my, well, my brother's red. And what do you think he would say to her? It'll be fine. We'll just do it. It's not a big deal. Do you think that's what she needed? No. And so I was watching this because I was down there. I, don't, I was, must have been down there babysitting. And I looked at her and I said, Jackie, do you know what they do to airplanes? She's like, no. I said, do you know before every flight, there is a pre-flight check and the mechanics go through a certain thing, the pilot has a checklist and before everything takes off, they make sure the plane is safe. They do? Yes, they do. And so you can be okay on that plane because they're gonna take care of making sure it's safe. And what was hysterical is like maybe two hours later, we're talking about her or something. And I hear her tell my brother, daddy, you know, the pilots make sure this plane's safe. And I went, oh yeah. Like it was like, oh, I'm learning and this helps. But if you have a blue looking at them and saying, oh, or they say, I don't feel good. Oh, you'll be fine. No, 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 don't worry about it. Their tank is low. Okay, you may have to talk to them. You might have to say, well, if your fever, if, we'll, if you still feel better, not well now, in a little while, we'll take your temperature. You may have to walk them through feeling safe to fill their needs up. 
And so our greens, let's move on to our greens. What do our greens need? Our greens need harmony. They need everyone to be getting along and not engaged in conflict. Now that doesn't mean everybody has to agree. It has to mean we can disagree, but let's do it in a civil, nice tone. We don't have, that doesn't mean everybody gets along and life is great and not a big deal, but it means we're being kind and calm to one another. They need a feeling of worth, meaning they're being valued for their unique strengths and talents. And so this is knowing they're investing in something and they need to know that they're worth it, whether that's in an organization, in your family, in um, your neighborhood. When a green does something, they wanna know that it was worth and they're worth something, so you need to tell them that. They need a lack of stress. So time to relax, the absence of conflict and combative words. So they do need time to relax and think. The one thing I know about greens is you guys are amazing thinkers and processes and you go through a lot of things to figure things out. And so they need that lack of stress to be able to do it. And they need respect. They need to be asked about their thoughts and opinions. Greens can be very quiet sometimes. And what they need you to do is ask, what do you think? What's your opinion on this? Because chances are they're probably not gonna give it because they don't wanna do it wrong. And they don't want it, well, if I say this, it might make them upset. And it's not that they're, it's, a lot of it is just caring about the other people. And so I'm learning for the greens in my life, what do you think? And I have to use questions to get them to talk to me because they're probably not gonna share it. And that by investing in them and asking them, then they're like, okay, they care about me. And so I'm gonna share with them. And so um, learning your needs can help you. How many of you yellows, when you heard those needs felt like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense why what I look for, what matters to me. How many yellows you kind of related to some of those? All right, how about my blues? How about my greens? How about reds? All right, so we wanna make sure we know those, but then we face an interesting challenge. We want to find out what do we do when those needs aren't met because unfortunately those needs aren't met all the time. So I do want to read this quote by Kathleen. Understanding innate needs helps interactions make more sense. Identifying the needs behind someone's behavior takes the sting out of what they do or say. It aligns your expectations with their wiring. So I understand my need for control, my husband's need for safety. The words that he used, there's a right way to do it, why are you doing that, used to sting. They don't anymore because I in my head go, this is related to his need for security and safety. This isn't about trying to make me feel bad. And so you do have to learn to make choices when certain people say things to you because it's coming from their need. Now, if all of us learn to do that together, we get along so much better because we're all working at it. But whether the other person is or not, understanding sometimes where the words they use come from can really help you make that choice to say, I'm going to choose not to be upset by those words because even though they sound this way, that's not what, it, what is at the heart of those words. All right. So what happens when your needs are empty, when they are not filled? The gas tank is empty. You're sputtering. We will manipulate to get them filled. We will, now the word manipulate's a very strong word 
but we will take matters into our own hands and try to get them filled. And so I think what's really interesting to think about is have, do, have you ever experienced someone in your life who is going over the top to get something that they want? And maybe you've never looked at it this way, but have you ever had a red boss or a red person who just pushes and dominates over people and gets their way and who cares about that person? Anybody ever experienced somebody like that? Why do you think they're doing that? It's not just to be a jerk. What are they looking for? What red need do you think isn't being met in their life? Control. Something's out of control. It's not working. So I'm going to use my weaknesses and I'm going to get to where I feel in control. How about somebody who um, is a yellow and maybe they're not getting the attention and the approval that they need. And so they're gonna start going, well, my friends are all going and doing this. I know I shouldn't, but I want them to love me. I want them to like me. I'm gonna keep going. How many people have fallen into peer pressure or done things because they wanted the crowd to still like them? And so I think it's really important we look at that because I think every one of us has manipulated situations to fill our needs. Just like that little boy who was jumping on the table and asking weird questions, he's trying to manipulate the situation to get the attention, the approval that he needs to feel during that moment. And so a lot of times we have to make a choice. When we see those things happening, we have to look at what's happening. And we can either react to it or respond to it. Reactions are hooked to what is happening. So that red boss is going at it and bossing everybody around and going over everybody. I'm gonna react to what he's doing. I'm gonna get mad, I'm gonna think he's a jerk, I might quit, whatever else. I'm reacting to what he's doing. Maybe now that you understand the need and once you learn where they are, you can respond to the why behind what they're doing. So why is that boss doing that? He's trying to feel that sense of control. So maybe you in the meeting, instead of getting mad at him, say, well, let's look about this and maybe we could do this. And how can I help you? What's the plan? I'm sure you have a plan to figure this out. What as a team can we do to take care of this situation? Which do you think is gonna dissolve that situation better? Yelling back at him, calling him a jerk, or saying, you're a great leader. I'm sure we're gonna be able to figure this out. Let's think of a plan. I'm sure you have one. What do we need to do? You can diffuse that because you meet the need and the why instead of just what they're doing. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna watch a couple kids again talk about ways they manipulate to get what they need based on their temperament. So we're gonna start with our yellows. Let's see what a yellow kid might do to get what they want. So usually whenever my mom won't, um, she's like working or something and I can't get her attention, I usually yell at her like this. Mom! Mommy! Mama! 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 Mom, where are you? If I don't tell you this, I'm gonna like die. It gets her every single time. <laughs> what if you wanted to do something and your mommy said no to you? What would you say to her? Oh, first you would pout. Please! What do you no. ever say, like, oh my gosh, you're the best mom in the world? Can well, I, I do that with her cooking. Oh. I got, like, a, one of the 
post-it notes, mm -hmm. and I um, wrote uh, the steak dinner was really good. Do you know I'm really fast at mountain biking? So I mean, like if I uh, if I join this, I get faster and uh, might get a scholarship, and you don't have to pay for my college. Who knows? What if we were quiet the whole day and we didn't ask you for anything? Like you're so nice and stuff. So please, and we won't bother you, so you can have your sleep. Are those new boots? You got a haircut. That's a great outfit. I really like your outfit. And now she's looking at me. She's like, I, you're, you're manipulating me. I'm like, manipulating you? I could never. I have too much love for you to do that. <laughs> okay, so our yellows are going to re resort to charm and flattery. You're the best mommy ever. Oh, oh, you are the most amazing friend, and I love you, and I can't wait for us to get together, and I just love it. Or it, like the charm, oh, and they'll kind of snuggle up to you. And most of you parents probably know that when your kids are trying to get something from you. Most of your yellow children are going to, oh, you're the best mommy in the whole world. I love you. There's no other mommy like you. If you let me do this, you will win the award. Now that can come in a lot of different ways, but they're gonna try to manipulate with charm and flattery. Now reds, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do something different. Let's see. When you are getting frustrated with your mom or annoyed, give me the face that you would do to her. Like what I usually do like an eye roll. <laughs> like, oh God. <laughs> kind of like look her up and down. Like, like that. <laughs> so you have a plan and you've delegated well to your sisters to help and nobody's doing what you ask them to do. I would be really mad. Yeah, and what would that look like? You did not do what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You did not listen to me. I told you what to do. And I I'm just gonna do it. Tell me about something that made you mad recently. When my brother or someone play with me. Yeah. I just started getting mad and I started a fight. Mm. It comes off my tone and volume. Mm -hmm. That's how, like, that's how you can tell I'm perturbed, mm -hmm. is I will definitely use my tone. Ma! Mm. You're not the boss. I either scream her name, Jenny, mm -hmm. or I call her mother. Mom, mom, mother, Jenny, mom! Wow. Now it's cute and you laugh when it's kids, but adults do the same thing. You will watch as a red to get what you want. Your tone goes up and your volume becomes stronger. How about our blues? What do our blues do? Is there any times where you get disappointed and you feel like they've said no or haven't allowed you to do what you want? I go to my room, mm -hmm. I stay in there for a little bit, calm myself down, mm -hmm. and go in and ask them why. What do you do when you're mad? I go upstairs in my room. Yeah? What are you doing when you're in your room? I'm usually just laying in my bed. Mm -hmm. I know. When I'm really frustrated, I like lock myself in my room or try mm -hmm. to just get away and read something mm -hmm. or stop what I'm doing because yeah. it's really annoying me. I like go to my room mm -hmm. and just stay in there for a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit of time to calm down. I be in my sister's room but I don't let her come in my room because they always touch my stuff, move places and stuff and I have to clean it up so that's why I don't let them in there. Yeah, because it's your room. Yeah. How do you have it? My rules. Your rules? Mm -hmm. Okay, so very, very different. When a blue isn't having their needs met, they're going to manipulate with moods and silence. And so they're probably gonna walk away. They're probably gonna disengage from you and you might see it in, in the mood. And so if they're feeling unsafe or somebody hasn't been sensitive to them, you might see, and I'm sure some of you have probably like seen people, wow, they're really in a mood. Instead of reacting, respond and think, why? What are they doing and why are they doing it? Maybe something isn't being met. And finally, let's see about our greens. If the teacher gives you assignment says due in 14 days, when are you starting it? Um, probably the day it's due. You know what procrastination means? 
Me. <laughs> How do you define procrastination? <laughs> procrastination is putting off for tomorrow what can be done today. I am a big procrastinator. <laughs> My mom's always like, have you done your homework? And I'm like, I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. Then <laughs> what happens when you do it? I don't get stuff done in time. And like that ends up that I have to do like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like if there's like a school assignment mm -hmm. and I'm not interested in it, mm -hmm. I will for sure wait last minute to get it mm -hmm. done. I try to finish it like the day right when I get it, but mm -hmm. that never happens. Mm -hmm. And I end up doing it like the last night I can do it. So you do it right at the end and then you pull it through, right? <laughs> yeah. If I have a choice, I'll put it off. Do you get in trouble for it? Every once in a while, yeah. Yeah? What about stubbornness? I'm pretty stubborn yeah. when it comes to certain things. Like, I don't know. Like, if it's something I really don't want to do, I'm like, can someone else do it? Like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Would you consider yourself stubborn? Yeah. Yeah? If I'm told to do, like, chores or something, mm -hmm. I'll kind of avoid it until they tell me that I have to do it. Mm -hmm. Has your mom ever made you do something you not, didn't want to do? Yes. Yes? It was called the Jingle Jog. I had to wake up early. Mm -hmm. Then we went there, and I was so, and I was just pouting on the way there. Yeah. I was like this to the window. <laughs> All right, so greens, they're going to use something different. It's called procrastination and being very stubborn. And so a lot of times a green, when their needs aren't being met, they're just going to, I am not going to do it and I don't like the way they're doing that, and they're gonna drag their heels, or they might also just procrastinate, put it off, okay? So, you can see maybe some of the behaviors that you experience in your life might come from something in that person that hasn't been met. There's a need, and so it comes out in their behavior. Now, I don't know about you, but that really helps me kind of understand a little bit more about people is like, why do people do the things they do when they're upset? Is because something isn't met inside them. And I'm sure we can all think about what has been done to manipulate and fill our needs, to fill people's needs. And this is where I loved the question last week about does being saved, does asking Jesus into your heart change your temperament? No, it doesn't change your temperament, but it changes how you handle your temperament. Now, the one thing I do wanna say, because I think it's really important when you hear about needs or if you're a parent or a spouse or a, a, a child of you know a sibling, how in the world do I meet all of their needs all of the time? You don't, okay? Knowing about someone's innate need does not require you to constantly be filling them. That is from all of the people around them. However, what was made in each and every one of us is that Jesus is supposed to be the one to fill every one of those needs. And I really look at what happened in the garden when sin entered the world and fellowship was broken is when our needs start going unmet. Adam and Eve before the fall had every single one of their needs met in their relationship with Jesus. Sin is what separates us from a God who will fill every one of our needs. So how can we look at other selfish, sinful people and expect them to fill every one of those needs in us? They cannot. And if you're looking to everyone in your life to fill your needs, you will always be running on empty. Jesus is the only one who can fill those needs. I love Philippians chapter four, verses 19 through 20. And it says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and father be glory forever and ever, amen. When you are feeling your needs unmet, you go to Jesus. 
you let him step in and fill every one of those needs. Um, and so this is another personal story just because this is what I, I've learned. So this is how I can share it with you. I'm a red and loyalty and a sense of control matter to me. Having a plan and people doing their part matter. I think it's incredibly ironic that God gave me a job where I need 50 to 75 people a weekend to do that. And I think there are times when God puts you in situations where he is the only one who can meet your need. And so when I first started as the children's director and I have these you know, 25 slots and then become 50 slots and 75 slots. And so what did I do? I made a plan. I figured out how we're gonna do this. We're gonna assign people a week of the month. They're gonna do this. We have an online scheduling program. They're gonna get a reminder. They're gonna get a text. We're gonna put out printed schedules. I did everything I knew needed to do, knew to do to have control over that situation. And guess what happens? Every week, somebody either is sick, forgets, or has another commitment. And if you're a Sunday school teacher and you need to call off, call off. Please don't take that as, I understand that, okay? This is not trying to get all of you to make sure you're there. But I love when you're there. And if you're not serving and you don't serve anywhere in the church, we have 50 to 75 slots every week. There is a slot for you that's once a month. I'll send you reminders and texts and you can plan. Just a little, I'm not joking on that one. So. So how do I handle that? Because I would start getting on Tuesday, I'd get a call. Or I would Thursday, oh, I can't do it. Or Saturday night, I'd get a text. I forgot I have to go do this tomorrow. How do you think I reacted to that? <laughs> okay, my need for control, oh my gosh, I can't believe they, like in my head, I'm like, don't they know? Didn't they look at their schedule? Aren't they planned? And so what was interesting was kind of early in being the children's director, I was faced with that every week and it wasn't good. And so I sat down with Jesus. I said, Lord, how am I supposed to handle this? Because I can't do this every week. I can't get that upset and not recognize that people have lives, things change. I need to be understanding of them. And he led me to this verse. And this is, it was a very odd verse, but this is what he told me. This is in Exodus chapter 14, verses 29 to 31. This is the story of Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea. God opens the Red Sea. Moses leads them through. And they're at the other end. They're through. And God brings the waters down onto the Egyptians. And this is where the verse picks up. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. This is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the shore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. And I was like, what? Like, Lord, what in the world? And as I started looking at it, you know, so I'm trying to picture what this looks like in my head, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm picturing the Egyptians, I love the movie Prince of Egypt by Walt Disney. And they do, I think they do an amazing job. And Moses is standing there and he's looking out at the sea and you can see chariot wheels floating and a few, cause it's Disney, you don't really see the dead bodies, but you know they're dead. And so I'm picturing this in my head and I'm like, Lord, why? Why did they have to see that? And he just gently spoke into my heart. They needed to know that the Egyptians were taken care of because if they had walked to the promised land, always wondering would the Egyptians be coming after them, they would have been scared the whole time. And he just spoke so sweetly to my heart. He said, I'm going to take care of the volunteers. You will never need, you will never go through a weekend where I don't help you get through it. 
And I, I mean, I was bawling, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, you've got this. And so now literally every week when I get that phone call or I get that text, I still freak out. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's still this red in me that goes, <gasps> and then I take a second. I went, okay, Lord, you're in control. You knew this was gonna happen. You've promised to provide for me. I'm gonna be okay. You're gonna take care of me. And then I move past it. Because the last thing I wanna do is see a volunteer on Sunday and explode at them yelling, how dare you be sick or something like that. Would that build relationships? Would that help me? No, God's word and Jesus himself came in and filled that need when I feel out of control. I truly wish it wasn't an every week thing, but it's the way he has it. And I'm learning that just reminds me he's always in control, which is very important. And that made me why as a blue, you face some tough struggles with things and you don't always feel safe because Jesus wants to step in. He wants to be your safety. We talked about reds, but yellows. Maybe there's time where there aren't a ton of people around you because he wants to be your people. And maybe as a green, he's allowing some stress in your life because he wants to be your peace. And he doesn't want your peace to come from other people. He wants it to come from him. And so in the last pages of your um, packet, there are scriptures. And I tried to find scriptures that matched the needs of the temperament. And these are just four scriptures that I thought might match each one of you. But I would highly encourage you, sit down with those four needs that, you, that apply to you and say, God, how do you meet these needs? What's a verse that when I, as a green, don't feel respected, what can I go back to you about? And so timing, we're okay. So I'm just gonna pick one scripture for each of the temperaments and just kind of point out how. So for the yellows, I love this verse in Zephaniah three seventeen. It says, the Lord your God is in your midst. You are never alone as a yellow. God is always with you. A mighty one who will save. And I love this. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He's not just with you. He is happy to be with you. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. And I heard a sermon a long time ago, that word exalt literally means he's like getting up and dancing around because he's so happy to be with you. So when you as a yellow feel alone, you have a God who is right with you, who is dancing over who you are. You don't need to have people fill you, he does. As a red, um, I love the scripture that says, may the favor of the Lord, our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. When you're doing and leading and planning, God, you establish. I can do all that I can, but if you're establishing it, if you're making it work, it will work. Not me, and I'm gonna dominate to get it to work. Lord, you establish the work of my hand. For our greens, Jesus says, I have told you this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And so in the middle of those stressful situations where you're looking at people just to get along and they're not, Jesus, peace is from you. You knew there were gonna be tough times. You knew there was gonna be this conflict. Be my peace in the midst of this. And for my blues, in Isaiah 41.10, it says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. 
God is there and he is upholding you and providing for you. And so I just encourage you, take some time and spend it with Jesus and let him fill that need because sometimes the conflicts in your relationship come from you trying to manipulate others instead of letting Jesus fill your needs. And recognize sometimes what unchristians do, where are they getting their needs met? Where do they go as a blue to feel sick? Can you imagine being a blue in this world and not knowing Jesus? I mean, that would be scary. And so maybe some of the reasons and what they're doing is linked to how they're facing their life. And so the scriptures are there. And then the other thing, this I gave to you because one of the things you can do is put this up someplace. Because yes, Jesus fills our needs. But I also know he uses people to do that too. And so you can help fill others' needs if you know what they are. And so maybe this goes on your fridge. Maybe this goes in your, I have one in my office. And so you're able to think, okay, if I'm gonna interact with this person and they're blue, maybe what are some things I could say? What are some things I could do? Because I know this is what will fill them up so they're operating in their strength, not pulling in their weakness. And so I do have a couple balloons up here in the little popcorn things. If you want to take an empty balloon and you want to put it in your Bible or put it someplace to remind you that Jesus is the one to fill it, you can pick one up there up here. I didn't want to put them out there. But if you want one, I just thought that might be a way to remember every day Jesus is where you go to get filled. So we have three minutes for questions. <laughs> Any questions I can answer about your needs? Yeah, I think it's real. I think kids can understand this. I have um, a couple kids right now that I'm working with. We had a, they had a big situation that happened between them. And so I'm meeting with them to try to figure out, can this work really well with kids? But the kids that I know who've learned this, they understand it. And so it is an easy way to say to maybe to a blue child, Okay, you need that space and silence. You can't leave school to do that, but what are ways that you can figure that out? And so maybe it's, okay, I'm gonna go the full school day, but I know at the end of the day, I have 10 minutes where I can go to my room. And so you can learn those things, like teach them to make them do it. But like, for example, if you have a green child who has to do something, tell them ahead of time, talk to them, say this weekend, one of the things that was really important to me and your mom, because they're people, frame it in people, is we need to get the house ready. We need to clean it up because grandma's coming or it, it's better for all of us if we live in a clean house. How do you see that going? Get their opinion. And then say, because you're going to learn something. Because I don't think there's any green that's saying, I don't want to help. I don't want to be part of something. They just don't like to be demanded and dictated. So maybe for them, it's like, well, if I could sleep until one, and then I'll really, I'll get up and I'll start doing this, this, and this. Um, Then they've had a part of it. They know how it matters to people and that you can engage them in it. And, and, and there are times where I think you have to say to kids, sometimes we have to do things in a way that we don't like. But for greens, for blues, or for greens and yellows, base that on people. For reds and blues, sometimes jobs have to get done even though you don't want to do it this way. 
And I, real, I, I highly recommend her book, The Grown Up's Guide to Kid Wiring, and watching her videos. I mean, I just put them on YouTube, and while I'm doing the dishes, I have it on, or I'm driving in the car, and I'm not watching it. It's in my purse, but it's playing. You can learn so much just from listening and just asking them. What's the difference between perfection and control? I think control is that you want to do it your way. Control is I want it done the way I want it done. That doesn't necessarily mean, well, for that person, then that is perfect. But it's, it's interesting because perfection to one person can look very different than to another person. So I think it's, a little of both, I guess. I'll have to think that one through a little bit more. Good question. All right, it is 816 and I am the children's director and I am not gonna allow you to be late to pick up your children. So I am gonna pray and dismiss you. If you do have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or if you wanna email me um, for next week, cause next week will be our last week. And next week we're gonna do some tips for each kind and a little bit about how to parent different ones, which also relates to interacting. But if you have specific questions, shoot them to me so that that way we could work them into next week. So let's just pray before you leave. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time together. Lord, I thank you that when I can talk about needs, I talk about a savior and a God who fills every single one of them. And I pray most of all from tonight that people will look in their hearts and allow you to fill those needs. Lord, use your word to meet them where they are as I know you do. Lord, I ask that you would give us opportunities to bless